Hi guys! Today we decided to do a little budget build with a twist. It is the start of the new school year on lots of places. So this PC should be ideal for a new student or a young gamer. And the twist for this is we decided to check if we can build a very cheap system that is capable of streaming at least in 720p resolution. So here are the chosen parts. First, this is Deep Cool Matrix 30. And the main selling point is probably this real glass here it is not plexiglass or some cheap plastic it's real glass it's a micro ATX case and it comes with one fan with the incredible price of around 25 bucks the heart of the PC will be this Ryzen 5 3400G uh, so it is the successor of the Ryzen 5 2400G and AMD made several improvements so you can so it can give you more value for the money the original 2400G was with a little bit of strange price of hundred and seventy dollars and it fall in a somewhat of a no man's land because you can have a cheaper 2200G or uh, Ryzen 3 1200 and add a basic graphics adapter also it was using thermal paste and the little right expired cooler so to rectify this we have the new chip which is not Zen 2 based it is the older Zen Plus architecture on 12 nanometers tech process and its price is $150 now it has a solder tin and it has a nice big cooler so it can be quiet because of this AMD also added support for precision boost overdrive there overclocking system from the motherboard that has minimal need for user intervention the storage device is Adata XPG Spectrix S40G it's an M.2 NVMe drive with 512 gigabytes of space we looked on it and got it for around 70 euro it is probably a little bit more expensive than a regular SATA drive but it has RGB you know RGB is fast and because of all this it got quite hot and needed a little bit of ghetto mode you will probably get another video for the ghetto mode the memory is somewhat oldish G-Skill Ripjaws V it's an 8GB 2x4 kit but it is DDR4-3600 and you can now find the 3200 variant which is more suitable for this PC for around 45 bucks, 45 euro and there are other possibilities in that space and you need fast RAM for the integrated graphics of the GPU motherboard is this ASRock ASRock 
X370M HDV. The interesting part about this is it is small and cheap motherboard. However, it is from the top end X370 chipset. I got this for around 55 euro. It was on promotion and you can typically find it around 70. The special feature of this motherboard is that it is extremely cheap but it has VRM cooling and also it supports 105 watts processors. So we will see what we can get from it. If you can find this, you can substitute it with ASRock B450 HDV, which is somewhat lower quality, but it is even cheaper. The power supply is RGB. It's air cool. VX Plus Series 600 watts power supply. It's a very basic unit, but Aerocool is a known, although not probably very high-end manufacturer of cases, cooling, power supplies, fans. And this here should be just around 30 bucks and it's a 600 watts. It has single rail. A uh, single rail 12 volt line that supports up to 552 watts and the main feature that made us get it despite the ugly ketchup and mustard cables is the fact that it has two PCI Express 8 pin connectors for video card so potentially you can get quite a good video card later in the life of the PC, for example RX 570, 580 or something like that. And let's not forget it has RGB. Finally, to finish up the RGB madness. We have this Segotep 3 pack of RGB fans that we get some time ago for 15 bucks from AliExpress. I don't know what's the price right now. I doubt it will be much higher. It has controller for 6 fans, even more than 6 fans. And here are the three fans. So it's an RGB game streaming budget PC. That's it for now. And we'll start with the building. Let's start. about the case as you can see here we have places for three hard disk drives on 2.0 inch SSD and another 2.0 inch SSD you can also mount a 
5.25 inch drive here like on DVD or Blu-ray burner and we have one fan the case has a mesh front so at least it has some minimal fan filtering So here is the filter, this is a good touch from Google and another filter for the PSU. Unfortunately the drive bay is not removable and it has the potential to block some of the video card sling. Let's install the motherboard. It's time for the PSU. It's time to mount the fans. At least they are with black cables. Now it's quite interesting part, so you need to mount one of the fans inside the case for some reason because the other fan is seated here with these long screws. If you install first the lower fan well you are screwed, you need to undo it and start again. So, as you can see, we are ready. The case offers some cable management space in the back. It's not very much, but it's something. Uh, we put here the needless cables of the PSU. It's not the most prettiest, but that will do. I frankly like that the motherboard has the USB cables here uh, sometimes it gets really troublesome down there and let's turn it on and see what happens but unfortunately we have a little bit of problem the PSU needs an RGB connector to light up but so surprisingly fans tend to be a little loud And it is mostly this fan. Probably if we add a little standoffs, it will not be that loud. But the controller has different fan speed modes. So yeah, we still manage to mess our massive ultra RGB setup, as unfortunately we don't have adequate cable to light up the power supply but 
this is it so it's around 400 euro 8 gigabytes of RAM 4 cores 8 threads 11 Vega cores and a half a terabyte SSD I hope you liked it and we will now test it to see how the gaming goes and is it possible to stream with it at least in 720p